Hey everyone, Gilgros here post match. Rafael Nadal versus Alexander Zverev, Roland Garros 2022 semi final. If you're not here for spoilers, click off the video in three, two, one. I'm not entirely sure how to approach this because it's different from any post match video that I can ever remember doing, but um, Nadal won wins via retirement. End of the second set, it is. 5-6-40-30, Zverev turns his ankle. It's not a normal ankle roll. It's much, much worse than your ordinary ankle roll. His foot got caught underneath him. All of his body weight and all of the pressure of his speed were placed squarely on his ankle as it turned over. And uh, Sasha knew right away how bad it was. He screamed in agony. It was really hard to watch, both in real time and the replay. And regardless of if you are a fan of Alexander Zverev or not, it was a terrible scene and an incredibly unfortunate way for the match to end. And I hope that long term, it is okay for, for Zverev and that he can be on the court and healthy as soon as possible. So I'm still going to talk about what the match was up to the point. Uh, however, the outcome was entirely up in the air. It was incredibly unclear who was going to ultimately win the match. And usually, of course, these videos, I have an outcome and I try to explain the outcome, and that's usually a complicated question or a daunting one. In this case, it's not. Zverev gets injured, and that is it. Uh, I will engage in zero speculation. Uh, I will not act like anyone had the upper hand because that's not how a tennis match works. There's a winner and a loser, and it doesn't matter that Nadal won the first set. Uh, it doesn't matter what the second set looked like. The reality was it's inconclusive. It is incomplete. Uh, because without the full body of work, you, you just can't evaluate um, the outcome of a tennis match. But I will uh, paint a picture and talk about the things that we learned and and, and talk about the things that, I guess, uh, was evident up until the point, if that makes sense. This was a really weird match. And look, the quality was, for me, pretty horrendous. But it wasn't their fault. It was not Rafa's fault. It was not Alex's fault. It was the conditions, I think. Uh, I think they're they're just too good as players to make that many bad mistakes with no explanation. And the the courts were playing as slow as I have ever seen any court play. So the serves weren't going to work. They didn't. It was going to be extremely difficult to finish. These players are both very, very fast, incredible defenders. And as a result, it was very hard for very simple things to work on the tennis court. For example, you hit a good first serve. You have a short ball on your forehand. And suddenly this approach shot, you know, is probably not going to penetrate the court because it's playing too slow. I mean, here's here's a guy in Zverev and Nadal, both with fantastic power from the baseline and really good offensive capabilities. Uh, it was worthless from the baseline. They really couldn't finish. It took the perfect ground stroke. It took 95 mile per, miles per hour right in the corner in order to hit through this defense. And the, the results of conditions that extreme were uh, was tennis that did not look like the tennis we are used to seeing by high-level pros. It looked uh, a lot worse than that. And it was still going to be really interesting to see who was going to win because, you know, tennis is, at the end of the day, a one-on-one -on -one battle. There's a winner and there's a loser. And it was about who was going to make the best of what were very, very strange conditions and a match that was, again, uh, really a comedy of errors, but a comedy of understandable errors, in my opinion. So let's talk about this uh, technically, and then I'll get to kind of physical and mental. Uh, technically, uh, Zverev's plan A was superior to Nadal's. Uh, first of all, the tennis that he played in the beginning of the match, up until leading 4-3 in the first set, 
Uh, that was some of the best tennis I've ever seen Zverev play. And he was hitting so confidently that he he was hitting through these ridiculously slow conditions. Uh, and, you know, indoor clay, the roof was closed. It was humid. I, I forget if I explained this or not. But, yeah, uh, I think it was the humidity. Uh, I think closing the roof made the humidity even worse. It was already a very humid day in Paris. And we, you could see by how much Nadal was sweating. And the, the humidity just slows things down and makes things very heavy. It keeps the clay damp. It makes the balls fluff up. It's just slow and heavy, and it's a slog. Um, Zverev's plan A was better than Nadal's plan A. The rallies were going to be long on average. And uh, on this particular occasion, this that favored Zverev because Zverev was handling the humidity physically better than Rafa was. So I thought he was staying in the points a little bit longer and was willing to grind. And I think Nadal was uh, feeling it a little bit more. And also Zverev was able to create more damage from the back of the court compared to Nadal. He was hitting out a little bit more confidently. He's able to flatten out his ball, especially from a high contact point, And I think reach a level of penetration uh, that even the Nadal forehand in these conditions I, I don't want to say it it can't be at that level because I think it can, but today it just wasn't. Uh, today Nadal's forehand was uh, lacking the supreme confidence and the the feel that would have been required for him to hit through these conditions. And it was actually Zverev who, when at his best, was getting through a little bit more. So in the long rallies... Zverev was uh, was the better player. He had a plus 11 differential. He won 11 more of the points compared to Nadal in rallies five or more shots. Uh, on the other hand, Nadal um, was plus 15 over uh, Zverev in the zero through four shot rallies. I think that is because... Um, and let me see what it was. In the first set, it was plus 16. So it, it evened out. In, in the second set, and then it was more even. I think in the first set, uh, Nadal got more free points. He was actually returning better. Um, and I think Servan Volley played a role. I think Zverev's early unforced errors played a massive role. In fact, 17-3 to three on unforced errors in the 0-4 through four shot rally. So so that that's it. I mean, Zverev missing first ball forehands, double faulting, uh, making, making more mistakes where Nadal, uh, although in the first set, he was a passenger, and Zverev was actually controlling play, whether by making mistakes or hitting winners. Uh, Nadal was clean, very clean in the first set, and and actually not beating himself whatsoever. Whereas Zverev at times was beating himself, at times was playing spectacular, borderline unplayable tennis. Now that's the plan A. But what was evident in this match is that Nadal was going to have to go to plan B. And he did so at the end of the second set. Uh, sorry, the end of the first set, and then I think even more so throughout the second set. Nadal is better than most. Most players, when they can't hit through their opponent, they become helpless and they lose. And that's the end. Uh, Nadal is not that helpless. He has tools. He has incredible tactical feel and understands when he can't hit through his opponent and you know, Medvedev at the U.S. Open, Del Potro at Wimbledon in 2018. Like, there are some epic, classic Nadal victories where he was actually not superior from the back of the court and was like, okay, we can deal with this. And what Nadal will end up doing is rely on net play. That includes serve and volley. That includes attacking short balls with approach shots. Uh, drop shots. Very, very frequent drop shots. I mean, he hit a ton of them in this match, which was exactly the right thing to do. It was completely necessary uh, on Nadal's end to do so. Um, and then also, you know, the defense and the passing shots and the counterattacks, still phenomenal by Nadal. Uh, something that was incredible against, against Djokovic in the quarterfinal and a, a big reason, and the only reason why he won the first set tiebreak, let's be clear. I mean, Nadal on some of the key points on, in the first set tiebreak read Zverev's approach shots and hit spectacular passing shots. Uh, one of them was down set point. One of them was on set point. They were both on the forehand. Uh, on, on many occasions, Nadal was uh, 
his anticipation and his counterattacking and his passing shots were on point. I think technically speaking, with the way the match was going, the key technical components were going to be approach shots, volleys, and passing shots. You could say Nadal's drop shot, and you could say Zverev's second serve. I think the, you know, but the key technical components, I really thought it would have been played with approach shots, volleys, passing shots. And uh, that, that you know, that was okay. That was good for Nadal. Um, but again, I think the, the meat and potatoes were in favor of Zverev when it comes to the, the ability to finish from the baseline. So uh, it, was, it was very fascinating in, in that respect. I guess the other things to consider is, um, you know, Zverev did have issues with nerves again. Uh, three double faults serving out the second set. He lost from 6-2 up in the tie break. Uh, his best tennis was at the start of the match. I thought that uh, consistently the, his worst tennis was when he had a lead. That was, I think, the most frustrating part of the performance from Zverev. In a lot of ways, it really was an impressive performance from Zverev. He served as well as he possibly could. He was incredibly aggressive. Never, not once, did, ha did he really get passive. Uh, there were just a lot of mistakes when it comes to uh, his volleying, his play in the forecourt, his ability to finish midcourt forehands, and his second serve. Uh, and all of those things faltered in key moments. But um, there were also plenty of por portions in the match where he was so good that he was making uh, making it seem like Nadal had no chance. And he was taking the racket out of Nadal's hands. So it was a wide range of, of outcomes for Zverev. And I don't want to harp too much on Zverev's nerve management because at the end of the day, the match was still in question. And if he got it together and won the match, then, you know, it wouldn't have really been an issue. Um, but from what we saw, he, uh, he had yips on his second serve again. And there were issues, I thought, with him playing the bottom end of his range of level when he had a lead, when he was in good position. The last thing I want to say is Nadal caught a break here physically. Uh, the match was three hours long. It was, um, again, they hadn't even finished two sets. And at a certain point, I think one man was going to collapse. Now, I'm not certain that that was going to be Nadal. I mean, maybe it was going to be Zverev, but... Uh, I don't know that that was sustainable. I don't know what would have happened, but I think the match would have changed. I thought that there was a decent chance with the humidity and the physicality of that match that someone was going to cramp uh, if the if the match wore on. And uh, yeah, I mean, again, this was not normal. N not, nothing about this tennis was normal. From the comedy of errors when it came to trying to finish points to the, uh, the physicality of it. It, it was just a strange match. And in that respect, I, I do think that, you know, ultimately what could have been the result was one of them was going to collapse physically. Uh, but, you know, whoever was going to move on to the final may have been in a somewhat compromised situation. Maybe. Now, we have to see what it's like with Rude and Chilich. Uh, but the point is, Nadal, especially off the back of two straight four-hour ma matches. Look, uh, I have been on the on the mountaintop screaming about how impressive Nadal's endurance has been. Throughout 2022, not just in this tournament, but at a certain point, it doesn't matter. Um, at a certain point, every man has a limit, and the limit may have been fast approaching. We don't know that, and it could have been Zverev uh, to completely physically collapse, but uh, with how much Nadal was sweating and the physicality and the time on court prior, man, something was going to give. Uh, really unfortunate. That's all I really have to say, and um, let's see what happens in this uh, Chilich Rude match. And uh, hoping for the speediest of recovery for Alexander Zverev. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.